Okay, we are we are on air. I think um, if okay, I think there are a few people in live. Okay, I see Brenda and Amy, Jackie, Kayla, Amy, Christine, Tammy, Dell. Awesome. Team Lorley Creative is in here. Hi, Dell. Awesome. Um, tell me where you guys are tuning in from and where in the world you are right now. How your day is going. New York, North Dakota. Hi, Amy. Awesome. I'm in New Jersey. It is gorgeous out right now. I wish I could do this outside. It is literally probably 65 degrees out right now. It's awesome. Um, hi, Brenda from Wisconsin. Thanks for joining. Columbus, Ohio. Hi, Jackie. Awesome. Virginia, Indiana, Minnesota. Oh my gosh, we have like literally like every state it feels like. Florida, New Jersey. Awesome. Great. I'm going to give a, about another minute for everybody to join and then we will get started. But you guys are definitely going to want a notebook. <laughs> there is definitely a lot of content. Um, I have made this as succinct as possible, but workflows are a really big topic to cover. So there's going to be a lot that we're going through. And I'm really excited too, because you guys are the first to see and hear my new workshop presentation. So we have totally revamped the structure and I'm really, really excited about it. So I hope you guys enjoy it just as much. I will have slides, so I will screen share in just a sec. I will actually do that right now and make sure you guys can see that. Let's see. Hi, Christine from New York. Okay, can you guys see my slides? And there we go. Missouri, awesome. Perfect. Okay, so I will get started making sure that we guys get you out here as quick as possible. Kayla, um, not access to the slides, but there is going to be a workbook. And Bridget is in the chat box too, as the Lorely Creative team. So totally ask your questions there in the chat box. We're going to keep all the questions to the end because I am totally the type of person that wants to answer everything as I'm going. And then you guys will be here for three hours and I don't want to do that. So I will most likely be answering a lot of the questions throughout the presentation, um, just naturally with the content, but feel free to ask all of your questions in the chat. And then Bridget is going to flash them in there. She's in there as Laurelie Creative Team. And we will make sure to answer everything in the Q&A section. And then yes, we'll send you the link to the replay after the webinar. So yes, you guys are here. We are officially live for the workflow workshop. And we are going to talk about simple steps to create or transform your workflows in your photography business from hot mess to hyper efficient. And the goal of our workflows and systems is that you will stop losing time. You're going to stop losing clients in your inquiry process. You're going to therefore stop losing money. So I am really excited you guys are all here. And I just wanted to thank you all for taking time out of your day to hang out with me today and to learn. So if you are totally new to me and to Laurely Creative, I'm Laura. I'm based out of New Jersey. I'm a wedding and brand photographer. First and foremost, that was my first business back started in 2013. And then I started totally accidentally teaching in 2016 when I realized that most creatives were not organized. So I will share a little bit more about my story later, but Essentially, I am a workflow and system strategist for creative entrepreneurs with everything under the umbrella of workflow, systems, productivity, business, and just working smarter so that you can act 
actually have work-life balance. So I am really on a mission to help people have more time for their lives while running thriving businesses that are profitable and successful at the same time without working on this hamster wheel all of the time. And so before we jump into a ton of the framework that we're going to go through, I want to ask if you guys have ever said any of these things to yourself. And just a caveat, it is way more fun for me. The more you guys engage in the chat, I can I can see the chat live. So let me know, just pop in a yes in the comments. So you are in the right place if you have ever thought one of these things to yourself. Number one, work-life balance is a unicorn. It doesn't exist or I'm drowning, I'm so busy, I can never seem to catch up. Or number three, my business is taking so much time away from my family. Or if I just had a few more hours in each day or each week, then I could totally get everything done. Or this last one, I never get to just shut off. Let me know if you guys have ever said any of those things before as it relates to your business or just your life. And then I want you guys to also share with me, you could either put a smiley face or a heart in the comments, if all of these scenarios sound better than your current reality. Number one, you are not working around the clock anymore and you have tons of new time, new free time to spend with your family, your friends and your loved ones. It is the middle of busy season and you have managed to cut your post-production time on your photography in half or more. Number three, your inbox is full of five-star testimonials from over the moon clients and you have tons of new inquiries. Number, I don't know what we're on. You are making more money while working less hours. You're actually not a frazzled, stressed out, overwhelmed top mess, holly freaking Luya. And you actually have work-life balance and you aren't making sacrifices personally for the sake of your business. And finally, this might be my favorite gif of the presentation, you actually have workflows and systems in place in your business that make running your business easy as pie. And also let me know if there's any other Despicable Me fans in here because I love this movie way too much. I want you guys to know that all of this and more is possible And before we get into the framework, I want you to meet some of my past students and people I've helped just so you kind of realize like and can see yourself in one of these places. So no matter where you are in your journey of getting organized, getting systems in place, getting workflows in place, I have helped people across the board. We have had students and coaching clients who are still working their full-time job and they dream of going full-time with their photography business. We've had students who are new moms or new dads who have taken systems and implemented them into their CRMs, which we will talk about later. And they've been able to cut their work hours down from 60 hours a week to between 15 to 20 hours a week when they got back from maternity or paternity leave. We've also had students and coaching clients who have been in business for 10. I think we even had a student recently join one of our programs who is in business for 20 years and they shoot 450 sessions a year, have multiple four kids, and they are actually finding time freedom while running a really awesome business. And we've also had students and coaching clients who are educators in the industry that we have helped streamline and get organized on the back end because on the outside and in social media, their business looked really great and shiny. They had all these amazing clients and were doing all of these amazing things, but on the back end, their business was pretty just, it was a hot mess. So some of our students, um, this just kind of paints the picture of across the board who we have helped. Karen has five kids and she went through a program that I will share more with you guys about later, but she said that she was so thankful to have a renewed desire to be productive and get organized. In one week, she ended up finishing her blog post for the week, all her social media, delivered a gallery called Two Weddings, got Tailwind set up for Pinterest for an entire month, and midweek she woke up sick and decided that she was going to take the day off instead of working for the rest of the day. So 
if that is something that also sounds great to you, being more productive, being more organized, let me know in the comments. Just pop a yes in there. Again, I'm like trying to see the chat box as I also go through this with you guys. And then we also have Beth. Beth is like, I love this message so much. And I think that this speaks to a lot of our parents in here. She had sent me an email and said, I've never, or actually is a Facebook message. She said, I've never been so excited in my business to feel like I could take a day off. I sat my computer down and went outside in the snow with Connor, her two-year-old son, today because I know there is change coming. What you've done is one of the hardest things I've seen. To have patience to write all of these workflows out, I can't wait to see where you go with all of this course and content. I am so confident. I have I've never been so confident in investing in something I know will see clear results to improving my life and business. So again, when you can get organized and get your workflows and systems in place, and we're going to talk exactly about how to do all of that, you can have that time freedom that I think so many of us start our businesses in order to have. So if that resonates with you, if time freedom is like what you started your business to have, let me know and let me know how you are doing with the whole time freedom thing. And then lastly, for now, there is Jasmine. She is also one of our students, and she said that she used to deliver her wedding galleries in four to seven weeks, but now it's about one week. And I really like to share these stories in the beginning because I think it's really inspiring for you guys to realize how important and vital these things are to implement into the foundations of our business. So if you are ready for that same success, I am so, so excited. Mary Beth said, I feel like I work all the time. Um, yeah, Mary Beth, for sure. I have been there and I'll share my story too. But if you guys are ready for that same success, I've got your back. My goal is to help you run your business 10 times faster and make time for the people and things you love the most. And just so you know, and you're not surprised at the end, we will be reopening the doors to photography workflow mastery 2.0 and that will come after you guys have learned all the content i can also drop that for you in the chat if you do need to leave early and you are interested in checking that out um, that will be a link to it but first i want to share my story so you kind of know where i'm coming from because i was not always organized i did not have workflows i did not know what a workflow was i didn't have systems in place and this resulted in me pulling all-nighters all the time because i was working a full-time job and doing my business I was actually a photo editor at a studio and then I would come home and I would have to edit wedding photos for another eight hours a night. And I would be up until 2 a.m. every single night, burning the candle at both ends, barely ever seeing my husband who back then was my boyfriend or my friends or my family. And I was truthfully exhausted and burnt out before I even got to go full time in my business. And my breaking point happened in mid-October, so right around this time. And my boss called me into his office. This is at the photo studio. And he essentially called out how burnt out I was. Um, Mary Beth, yeah, this definitely works for portraits. I do tons of portraits and tons of brands, so it will work. Portraits are all in that course as well. Um, but I was in my in my boss's office and I just slumped against the wall. Truth be told, I was wearing pajamas to work that day, like sweatpants and a sweatshirt hoodie. I think I had my hood up. I was just, I had had it. I was so burnt out. I was so overwhelmed and behind. And if you guys are familiar with fall on the East Coast, if you're an East Coast photographer or, you know, I'm sure there's lots and lots of places that actually got fall leaves. So not just the East Coast, but I'm on the East Coast. But we had, um, by we, I mean me, I had 19 sessions and weddings that October that were all in queue to be edited on top of editing for my full-time job. And if you've ever worked at a photo studio before, you know that Christmas catalogs and Easter catalogs are happening months beforehand. So we were working on all of these catalogs for 
Christmas tree shops and Toys R Us and Ross stores. And I was so burnt out. And my boss called me into his office and he said, Laura, I don't want you to end up in the hospital. I don't want you to be grinding your teeth so much that you go deaf like I did from stress. He actually made me buy a mouth guard. So I think you can go full time in your business. I think you can make it. And if you are waiting for permission to quit, I will find a replacement for you and you can quit. And so on that day, I gave my notice and my final day at that job was the day before Halloween. I remember being really sad that I missed the Halloween party, but I, for a split second, felt free until the last day at the studio when I went home to those 19 weddings and sessions that needed editing. And it felt like this list was never going to end, that the client work was never going to end, the to-do list, my editing queue. I didn't feel like I could ever take time off to do the things that I wanted to do by being my own boss. And I just felt like I didn't think running a photography business was going to be 90% admin work and 10% or less of photography work. And I knew that in order to love my business, things needed to change. And so my mom sat me down. She was an office manager at a dentist's office at the time. And she was like, you need some systems. You need some standard operating procedures. And so after that day, I went home, sat at the dining room table, and I started mapping out my first rendition of a workflow. And I spent my entire off season refining everything I had learned about managing clients, photography, project management, and post-production. And I put it into this system that I could repeat over and over and over again for every single client. Later that year, so now we're going into 2016, I ended up shooting 28 weddings, about 35 engagement sessions, at least 12 brand sessions. And what happened was, oh, Oh no, are you guys not seeing? Hold on. Mm. Oh no. Hold on, guys. Why are you not seeing this? Hold on. I don't know why it's stuck. Okay, now now you guys can see. Thank you. Um, Sorry, I think my slides were just frozen. Um, So after that day, I went home, created all of these systems, and what happened was something that I completely didn't expect because, to be honest, I was creating these workflows because I wanted time back. And what happened was my rates ended up being able to increase because my referrals went through the roof. My referrals went up 1200% and I actually doubled my income from the year before. And somehow I had more free time than ever. So I was working way less while making two times more. And this continued to happen year after year after year. And in 2017, I ended up taking 58 days off without working. 2018, I took two single dollar going to paid advertising. So that is something that I think is really important to note. I have not advertised my business since 2015 for photography. Um, so photography, not for um, not for workflow workshops. And I ended up saving after implementing what I'm going to talk to you guys about, about 35 hours per wedding on post-production and getting my portrait workflows down to about two hours total. So what we'll go through today is essentially how I did this. So we are going to go through my exclusive four-part overwhelm to organized framework to help you guys create or transform your workflows. So if you have a little bit of a workflow and you want to transform it, this will help. If you are starting from zero, this will help as well. We're going to also talk about where most business owners have leaky holes in their business and how to fix them for good so you can stop losing time, clients, and money every year. The two most important systems you need to be organized in your business. And the reason why most business owners without this one tool are losing 79% of bookings, which is mind blowing. We'll also touch on the areas I see most business owners going wrong when trying to set up workflows and systems and a heck of a lot more. 
But first, as I said, it is way more fun to me, way more fun for me, the more interaction you guys have in the chat box. So hopefully you are actively listening and not super bogged down by editing. We will be about another hour and get you out of here. But I wanted to share with you guys a link to this file. And we are going to say share. Let me know in the chat box if you guys can see that file. So what we're going to do is go through this workflow workshop assessment as I go through this content. So it's going to go through all of these different sections with us. So somebody just let me know in the chat if that is going to um, pop up for you, if you can see that and download that workflow checklist. I know I have a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to assume yes. And at the very end as well, I will share a 18 page workbook about everything that we are going through today. So first, we need to talk about your business foundation as it stands right now. So I want to talk to you guys about this concept of a leaky bucket. Imagine this, you are trying to fill a bucket with water and you keep losing water because there's four to five holes in your bucket. You try to fix the holes with some duct tape and it temporarily works, but as the tape wears down, water starts to leak out at the seams again and again, and the process continues to happen. And this is what most businesses look like. And it's really hard to see these holes when we're not tracking things, like when we're not tracking our time or tracking our finances or tracking the success of our inquiry process. But I guarantee that every person listening, including myself, there are always going to be holes in our buckets. And our job as business owners is to do the best we can to fill all of these holes. And when we have holes in our bucket, what happens is we lose clients. This could mean that our inquiry process, our inquiry workflow and our booking workflow has holes in it where we are losing out on people. Maybe we're getting ghosted. Maybe people are falling off after the consultation. So we have holes in our inquiry process that we're losing clients, or maybe it's even further than that on our website or our marketing. So it could be a copywriting problem. It could be a portfolio issue or a social media connection problem. So hole number one causes us to lose clients. The second major hole would be anything that causes us to lose time. And that's really going to be one of the main things that we're chatting about today. All of these things also money and cl or sorry, clients and time are going to cost you money because either A, you're going to need to outsource or hire out things because you're inefficient or B, you're losing money because you're losing clients. And then losing referrals could happen if you are lacking in any of your client experience, if you're not having that wow factor. And I think all of this really helps result in losing work work-life balance. And what we're going to discover today through this content is that a good workflow and system is going to be the way to actually fill all of these holes. And we're going to dive into this concept throughout the presentation as we go through these four phases of the framework. Because I just want you guys to imagine what it would be, what would be possible for your business and for your life if all of these holes were fixed. That instead of burning out, if you were closing 20% more of your clients that came in the door, if you weren't losing money because of inefficiencies and you were actually able to make more money while working less, while being able to take a vacation and work with clients that refer you over and over again, and you had money to sustain your business long-term without the constant hustle and this hamster wheel mentality, let me know what would be possible or drop a heart in the comments if you don't want to type a full sentence. If that sounds better to you than losing clients, losing time and losing money. So I know there's a delay, but I hope to see like 34 hearts in the comments right now. And all of this starts with your workflow foundation. Simply put, if workflow is a totally new concept to you, 
a workflow is a step-by-step -step process of every single thing you do for a client project or an internal business project. It is everything on both the front end, the client facing side and the back end of your business internal tasks that you need to do to complete a project. And a great workflow needs to be repeatable. It needs to be easy to follow. It should be automated or partially automated in a software. It should do the thinking for you. And we'll get into what that means later. It should be consistent and easy to train somebody on. It should be very detailed so that steps are not missed or forgotten. It should make you more efficient. It should be valuable for both you and your client, and it should have due dates. And as I mentioned, when I started creating my workflows, my mom was the one who said, I need systems. I need standard operating procedures. I need a workflow. And I want you guys to think, I know she's probably listening. I want you guys to think you need to create your workflow so detailed that your mom who does not do photography, well, my mom does photography, but if your mom had no clue what photography, what you did for your business or your spouse had no clue what you did, your workflow needs to be detailed enough that they would know exactly what needs to be done next and when. So just think of that. We want to make this as detailed so that somebody outside of our industry would be able to follow this. So that brings me to our next little section here of what should be included in your workflow. So let me first explain what a workflow is not. It is not just a list of tasks and it's not just a couple of emails. It is everything you do from beginning to end of your client journey or process. So there are two sections to this. We have 10 things essentially that are included in every service-based workflow. And part one is the back end workflow components. This means we have different sections or chapters of our workflow. We have tasks, we have subtasks, which are really important to make sure things aren't slipping through the cracks. So an example would be blog wedding is a task. A subtask might be select a featured image, title the blog for SEO, do all the Yoast SEO prompts. So you'll have subtasks under these main task headings. And then everything needs a due date and everything needs to be assigned to you or somebody on your team or a subcontractor. So essentially just visualize this color-coded document of who's doing what. So that's our first section is the back end workflow components. And then we have part two, which is the client facing workflow side. So this is going to include client education. This could be in blog post form, in newsletter form, in video form, in a client lounge, in email form. We're also going to have, um, it could also be in like a what to wear guide or whatever. We're also going to have all of our email communication to both our clients and vendors. We're going to have all client documents, so questionnaires, pricing guides, brochures, timelines, all of that. And then we're going to have client gifts and client meetings or vendor meetings. So where I see a lot of people going wrong when they're creating a workflow is they're really only using the backend tasks like, oh, okay, I need to call this wedding. I need to, you know, I shot the wedding. I need to call, edit, blog, and deliver gallery. Like that's really where people's workflow like stops. And it really lacks all of these client facing workflow components. And we're gonna jump into a little bit more in phase one of why this is so detrimental to your business when you're missing these components in your workflow. So what we are going to do is we're going to go through what I have deemed the overwhelmed to organized framework. And all of these things, all of these components are going to come into this framework. And so let me know if you have ever said building workflows and templates seems too hard and I don't know where to start. Again, I know there is a delay, but let me know if you have ever said that. I'm just going to take a sip of water.
If so, if you have said this, this is where you start. Phase one. Phase one is all about building out the actual skeleton and structure of your actual workflow. The build phase goal is to have a step-by-step -step process mapped out in checklist form of everything you do from the moment someone inquires all the way through delivering your service. So this could mean your gallery, your album from start to finish, etc. And there are essentially five steps to the build phase. The first step is writing out each section of your workflow. So sections are actually, they're not tasks. They are essentially where everything is going to live. So it's where your tasks, your subtasks, emails, etc., all exist throughout the different stages of your workflow. So examples of this a section would be the inquiry process or client onboarding is a section. So I always like to say that this step one is really writing out the table of contents of your workflow. So think of all the major milestones you have within your workflow. So for me, I have inquiry process, booking, client onboarding, pre-engagement session, shooting the engagement, post-engagement, pre-wedding, wedding, post-wedding, post album design, and then you can also do virtual or in-person sales. And then following that is step two, where you are going to fill in each section with all of the back end and the client facing components that we went over on those previous slides. So all those 10 pieces of a workflow. So once you, so I'll have a screenshot of actually what this looks like. So that's our step two. We're actually just filling in the meat and potatoes into our sections. And then at this point, you are going to have this really long checklist of every single thing you need to do from beginning to end of your workflow. And once you have that written out, you can go through and determine when each task subtask, email, questionnaire, etc., needs to be completed. So you are going to have to add a due date based on three major things. And those are going to be either before or after the project date, when a workflow is activated, or when a previous task is complete. So those are your major due date triggers. And again, I will have a screenshot of this in a little bit. So Mary, it might also um, help to see a screenshot of this in upcoming slides. After you have assigned due dates to everything in there, you are going to make sure that every single task in your workflow is assigned to somebody. It can also be you. So you're going to go through this whole big checklist and you're going to see what you can outsource, what you can delegate to somebody on your team, or maybe a subcontractor. And so when I first created my workflow, I literally was writing it down on paper the first time I did it. I was highlighting in different colors who was able to do what. So I was like, all right, this is me. This is going to be my mom. This is going to be an editor. This can be an intern. This can be an employee, whatever. Back then, I did not have any team whatsoever. It was like me and my mom helped as well. And so I was just kind of getting things going. So that is our fourth step is assigning each task. And again, I'll have a little screenshot for this. And then finally, our last build step and probably my favorite part of the build process is adding in the wow factor to your client experience in each section. So gleaning what you know about marketing, where can you add client touch points in each section of your process to build more value, better their experience, make a personal connection? Where can you surprise and delight your clients? What questions can you answer that will make their experience better? What parts of the process do you have little communication with them that you can reach out and stay top of mind? And essentially just how can you wow them? And I'll ask those, I think I asked those questions in the workbook so you guys will be able to definitely go through and see those questions in, in real time. But this last step of the build phase is so important because your client experience can either be the reason that your clients rave about you to all of their friends, 
or the reason why your business is a marketing army of one, which is yourself. So which would you rather? Would you rather have everybody referring your business or you having to do all the work to get new clients? And I'm going to share an example here of a real life example that all of us have experienced in our life. So we have restaurant A, which only has the back end components of their workflow in play, and then restaurant B, which has all 10 components. So they have the back end and the client facing workflow components. So restaurant A takes forever to bring you water. There's no warm, fluffy rolls on the table. It takes a long time to get menus and to get seated. The waiter or waitress has to constantly be flagged down to get more water or drinks or utensils or napkins, etc. They don't ever check on you to see how your food is doing. And it takes forever to get the food once you actually order it. And don't get me wrong, restaurant A actually has really delicious food. Like they've got that going for them. But their experience here was really not worth writing home about versus restaurant B, which actually used all 10 of these workflow components. And when you walked into the restaurant, you got seated right away. Your waiter or waitress came over and they educated you on the menu and the wine that goes best with your selected entree. There was warm, fluffy rolls waiting on the table for you, which my husband absolutely loves. They immediately brought you to your seat. The water was already filled. And as soon as your water or your wine started getting low, without you even needing to ask, they came over and filled it up. They also came in, they checked in frequently to see how you were doing, how the food was, if you were enjoying yourself and if they could get you anything else. And at the end of the night, they actually surprised you with a free dessert because you happened to mention when you made the reservation that it was your anniversary. So I want you to imagine that these two restaurants have the exact same level of food goodness, but you can clearly see which restaurant you are going to go and tell your friends and your family about. <coughs> and this is the picture that I want to paint for you guys when you are not using all of those client facing workflow components, you are letting your business solely rely on your portfolio in order to get booked. You are not having the runway, so to speak. So if you're a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer, if you are not having client education or emails throughout the process, you're not building rapport with questionnaires, you are not <coughs> having meetings or being a resource to communicate with vendors for them or all of these things, you're losing out on this, you know, maybe a six to 18 month period, depending on how far out you get booked, that your clients can't refer you because they haven't gotten or received anything to talk to you, talk to their friends about you with. So when you're lacking this client experience before the portrait or the wedding day, you're really missing out on referrals and potential clients because when you're solely right, sorry, talking always gets me. Whoa, hold on, I need water. When you are solely relying on your portfolio, you're hugely doing your business a disservice because you're missing out on all of the potential clients that your existing clients could have spoken about you with. So I want you guys to really bring this into your brain that you need to include these client facing workflow components when you are building out your systems. And Austin is one of my workflow students. She is as type B creative as they come. She's also one of my bridesmaids now. And she said, I am flipping amazed how easy it really was to do. Following Laura's systems and workflows pulls the emotion out of 
the work immensely for me. And for somebody who is scatterbrained like me, I've never felt more productive and efficient after a wedding. By Tuesday night for a Saturday wedding, I had everything done that in the past had taken me weeks to do. Everything is organized, prepped, and since I outsource my editing after my blog images, I have no to-dos with this wedding till it gets sent back to me this weekend. I've never felt less stressed three days after a wedding ever. Also, my clients are so ecstatic with the experience and their blog already being up. So I love that. And this is a screenshot of the booking section of my wedding workflow. So Mary, hopefully this helps you kind of visualize what this will look like. So this is a checklist just in a Google Doc at this point that will later be transferred into a CRM when we get further into the process. But you can see here that I've labeled something. It's either a task, an email. This section doesn't have questionnaires, but another screenshot I have later will show you that. So you'll see it says create task, what the actual action is, and then it'll have the due date as well. So I don't know if you can see my cursor, but you'll see it says like one day after previous step or zero days after previous step. So this is essentially what your workflow, this is what the build phase looks like. Um, Milano is just a visual planning tool. Do not use Milanote for workflows at all. That is more of a mood board tool. We use Milanote. I love it for planning brand sessions. That has nothing to do with workflows, so definitely um, would not recommend it for that. Um, we will talk, though, about systems that you would want for your workflows. So now before we go into phase two, I would love for you guys to assess your score for phase one. So the way this works is every one of these check boxes is one point. And if you are sitting at zero points, don't worry. That is why you are here and that is why I am here to help. So one point each, you'll have a total of six points for this section. Um, so it'll be zero to six. So number one, I have a workflow written out for every client project type I do in my business. Number two, my workflow includes every task and subtask on the back end that I do from inquiry through service completion. Number three, <coughs> my workflow has due dates on every task, email, and questionnaire, so I always know when things need to get done, and I can automate these in my CRM. Number four, I know every email and questionnaire I need to send from beginning to end of my workflow. Number five, my workflow includes a tremendous amount of value for my clients and builds in marketing too, which can help me continually book out my calendar. And then number six, me and my team are all clear on who's responsible for what task, and I've got a plan for what will be outsourced. Um, Gigi, there will be a replay. We'll definitely send a replay out. I'm sorry, your screen keeps freezing. Um, so let me know, you guys, what your score is for this phase one. And again, this is what that first workflow assessment um, was that I shared in the chat. And while you pop in there, I'm just going to take a sip of water. Okay, so as you guys share that, I'm going to jump into phase two. And this is where we hit this limiting belief that I don't have enough time to get my business organized. But according to data, both my own and Fast Company, which obviously we know is a very reputable source, 70% of business owners and CEOs work is wasted because it's not streamlined. That's mind blowing. 70%. Um, Kwani, I'm so excited. This helps you as a designer. I went, to, um, I went to school for design. So Kwani's at zero, zero. Ashley's at zero. Mary is at zero. So yes, this is all making sense. I'm very excited. So phase two now is streamlined. So we do not want to be like all business owners and CEOs who are wasting 70% of their work time because it is not streamlined. So that brings us to our streamlined phase. So once we have built this checklist foundation of our workflow and we have completed our build phase, we're going to move into the streamlined phase, which is absolutely vital to plug the holes in your bucket. 
Jackie also at zero. So you guys are in good company over there. I can definitely help. So your streamlined phase goal is to make every step so you can stop wasting time reinventing the wheel for every project. And the streamlined phase is essentially three big steps here. So step one of this phase is going to take a bit of legwork. This is probably the most work of the whole process. And at this point, you now know what emails you're going to be sending, but you need to actually create templates for them. And then letters, brochures, contracts, proposals, invoices, packages, and all of this can be templatized in a CRM, a system for everything you do that is a task. So if you create timelines, if you create family formal lists, when I say system, we're really talking about a repeatable process for every single task you do as efficient as possible. So we want to create a repeatable process for creating timelines. We want to create a timeline template. We want to create a family formal list template, a collecting vendor info template. We want to create a step-by-step -step process for post-production that makes every task, culling, editing, blogging, SEO, all of that as efficient as possible. And then we also want to have a system for outsourcing and delegating and knowing what we need to do. So step two is really taking now we've created templates for all of the client facing tasks, essentially all the emails and questionnaires. And now we're creating systems and efficiency hacks for all of the tasks that we do. And then um, Mary just hit refresh, just like refresh your URL if your screen is locked. Um, hopefully it's not for everybody. So that's our step two for streamline. And then step three is going to be using apps to make your life easier. So things like scheduling meetings, tracking mileage, and scheduling social media are all going to be things that you are able to use an app for in order to automate things. So that's really our step three. And Kwani, these are all gonna go into the CRM, so we'll talk about that in the automate phase. So I want to paint this side-by-side -side picture for you guys as well here. So instead of a restaurant this time, we're going to say photographer A and photographer B. So photographer A is spending roughly 12 to 14 hours per wedding writing emails, or this also could kind of average out to per week. The average employee spends 2.6 hours per day in email, um, the most being around five hours per day in email. So that is a pretty solid average that writing emails is 12 to 14 hours per wedding client. And then we have sending client documents, which is our questionnaires, brochures, contracts, proposals, invoices, all of that around five hours per wedding. Creating timelines. I've had many past students tell me that it takes them about eight hours because there's no system. It's a lot of pages. It's really confusing. So eight hours is a frequent response I get for that. Maybe you're more at like four to six. I don't know. And then creating family formal list. This can also get really overwhelming without a system, especially if there are divorced families that you need to take pictures of. Then it just gets into this really big list um, that can be a little daunting if you don't have a system. Collecting vendor info can also be really scattered, so about an hour there. And then our other pre-wedding prep tasks are about three hours per wedding. And post-production on average for any given photographer is usually between 18 to 30 hours per wedding. This includes everything um, for culling and editing and delivering galleries. And then blogging separately, because not everybody does it, is around three hours per wedding on average for a not streamlined photographer. And then scheduling and having meetings is around four hours per wedding. So what this comes out to is photographer A working 50 to 70 hours per wedding. And they actually have a leaky hole of 30 to 50 hours that they are losing per wedding because things aren't templatized or efficient or automated. And we're going to talk about that. And then if they are doing 20 weddings a year at $5,000, I know that might not be your pricing, but we're doing easy math here, that would be $100,000 in revenue. If they were 
averaging 60 hours of work per wedding plus shooting time. That would be 1,200 hours a year just going to their wedding work plus all their shooting time and business development hours. So just for those 60 hours of work per wedding, not including shoot time, they're getting around $83 per billable hour. But when you add in all of these business development hours, which are going to be at least a thousand more because the average year is, I think, 2,080 hours um, for a 40 hour work week. And I know entrepreneurs work more than that usually. You are uh, making not as much as you should as a business owner. And this is essentially what you are doing when your business is not streamlined. And a crazy stat, this is insane. I actually sent this to Bridget. Um, I just thought this was mind blowing that. Um, CMO Council found, which is um, just like a data source, they found that at least $1 trillion is lost by companies every single year due to mismanaged tasks, resulting in wasted productivity and lead management. And obviously, I know we are not making a trillion dollars or a million dollars in our photography business, but we are potentially losing out on tens of thousands of dollars because of wasted productivity. Um, the average is actually for every $50,000 you make, most employees are losing $11,000 from disorganization and wasted productivity. So if you enjoy making 50,000 to lose 11 because of all your time being wasted, um, then hopefully I can fix that. And the reason that this is so, so important is that your growth is inhibited when your capacity is maxed out. So I want to share here a little example of a friend of mine. She's a student and she was a coaching client. She's been to my retreat. She's in my course. She hosts Christmas mini sessions every year. She started this a few years ago. And initially she was doing 50 sessions for her Christmas minis. And she was really at capacity with 50 sessions. And I think back in either 2017 or 2018, she came to my first ever retreat. We talked about workflows and systems and she really went home and implemented all of these concepts that we're talking about today. And now she is, uh, you know, COVID year is a little different, but last year she did 800 mini sessions and had everything culled, edited, and delivered in nine days. So she was able to, what is that, 16 times the amount of sessions she took on and deliver them in the same amount of time that she took to do 50 sessions. And her planning time is essentially the same. Like her planning time for this event is essentially the same whether she's doing 50 or 800 or 1200, which is the goal. And so, what happened is she was maxing out because her capacity was maxed out. Her growth was inhibited. But once she was able to find ways to streamline, get organized, get a workflow in place and get automated, her capacity raised and she was able to, I think it was like 60 times her like income for these mini sessions or like six, like, I don't know, um, 50 to 800 is a big, huge difference in these sessions. So I think that is just a perfect painted picture of what happens when we are maxing out our capacity. And I think this is a really great time to be thinking about this because if you guys are wedding photographers or portrait photographers, you may have had a ton of clients move their weddings to next year. I personally have had pretty much all of my clients move their weddings to next year. And now photographers are battling what to do next year. Do we take double the amount of work or do we just take a huge income cut because we can't handle the amount of work or the post-production and we're just going to be zombies. But my <laughs> option C is what if you can instead increase the capacity because you streamline the business? And that is what photographer B has done. This is essentially a snapshot of what my photography business looks like. So writing emails, because they are all templatized, is about one hour per wedding to approve and send. Sending Client documents are also all templated out and input into my CRM and automated in my workflow. So it's 
roughly an hour of her wedding. Creating timelines is a super succinct system now that's about 20 minutes per wedding. Family formals take about 15 minutes. Collecting vendor info is mostly done by the client, which is about 10 minutes now. Other pre-wedding prep is an hour and post-production is five to 12 hours. So we are done. If I shoot a wedding on Saturday, we are done with post-production by Tuesday for the most part. And it is off to whoever is going to edit the full wedding. We've also been able to do five to 12 hours in house um, total to edit our own weddings. We have not sent a single thing out to an external editor this year. So we've been doing um, all my micro weddings and I had more shoots than ever before this year. We had uh, about 20 in October um, that are all fully delivered now. And so we have really streamlined this post-production and then blogging is now about an hour and scheduling and having meetings is about two hours per wedding, which means that photographer B is working 13 to 20 hours per wedding versus photographer A, who is working 50 to 70. They're losing zero hours per wedding and they're still making $100,000 a year because they're doing 20 weddings at $5,000. They're roughly working 15 hours per wedding versus the 60 on average that photographer A was doing, which means they have 300 hours per year towards their wedding. So that's amounting to $333 per billable hour for photographer A. And now photographer B has this potential to scale. So if they were like, you know what, I'm good with working 1200 hours for all of these weddings. I now see all of this potential that photographer B could have. They could do 80 weddings as a studio. So they could now quadruple the revenue because they have increased their capacity. And I'm not telling you to go out and shoot 80 weddings. Please do not do that. You will just lose all of your sanity being away every single weekend. But this could be with an associate team. Or you can scale by learning in-person sales or virtual sales or you don't need to scale up at all. You can scale back. You could make the same amount of money while cutting your work time down by a quarter in this scenario. So the thing is, you get to decide what you do with the saved time. And so I want to ask you guys that. What could you do with the extra 900 hours a year? Would you take on more work? Would you hire an associate team? Would you take a sabbatical? Would you go to all of your kids' soccer games? Personally, I love this gift so much. Oh, weekends are a little tough because I'm busy with my free time. I absolutely died when I saw this gift. I hope you guys enjoy it. And then with this streamline phase wrapping up, I want to share this story from one of my students, Laura, she said in module one alone, the course was worth every penny to me. I, she, so she was actually a bride when she got the course and she was ready to give up on her wedding planning because she was so behind in her business. She was going to call it quits and go to the courthouse. And you can see her message here. She said she was just done and knew something had to go, but she couldn't quit her day job. She couldn't quit photography because she had all these bookings. She was going to school and she said three weeks ago there was nothing but anxiety attacks and today I jumped out of bed and couldn't wait to start my day. And I wanted to share this here because she also templatized and streamlined everything. So she used Calendly to schedule meetings and she was actually in Napa with her grandma. This is like a year or two ago at this point. She was in Napa with her grandma and she said she booked a consult with somebody while she was on vacation from her templatized email and the client was sold on her before she even got to the meeting based on stuff that she had educated her on within her email templates. And she actually booked the ride, ended up paying for her entire vacation from that booking, which was amazing. So that brings us to our score for part two. And again, you guys are learning the drill by now. So we have one point for each. So number one, I have emails set up for everything I regularly send my clients. Number two, I have client education set up in my workflow that allows me to give my clients a great experience sharing my knowledge with them. 
Number three, I can deliver weddings in a week and portrait sessions in a matter of hours without working around the clock. Um, number four, I have processes in place for repurposing my content. Five, I have blogging templates that I follow for each client that helps me write blogs in 15 minutes or less. And then we have all the back end work that wraps up to about an hour. I've created questionnaire, brochure, invoice, proposal templates in my business that are integrated into my CRM so I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time I get a new client. My admin tasks are streamlined so they take up minimal time and I utilize productivity apps that help me save time and automate the minutia in my day to day so that I can focus on income producing tasks. Let me know if you guys want to in the comments what your score is there and I'm going to take a sip of water while we jump into phase three which is automate. Okay, so phase three, this is the magical part, you guys. This is where we get to take everything we did in phase one, the build phase, and phase two, the streamline phase, and put it into a system so that all of this is working for us automatically instead of us manually doing everything in our business. So in this section, you guys need to know that there are two essential types of software you should have in order to get automated and organized in your business. The first one, if you don't have it, is a client relationship management software. This is going to be anything like HoneyBook, 17 Hats, Dubsado, Tave. There's a bunch more, but those are the basic four. And then task management software, which would be like ClickUp, Trello, or Asana. And I can share a little bit more about the difference in the Q&A later. But our goal of the automate phase, yeah, Iris works exactly. The goal of the automate phase is to take everything <coughs> that we created and put it into a system that works for us so that we can cut our work hours down by 75% or more and run a business that does not run us without needing to hire a team. So essentially we're going to take everything in phase one and phase two and put all of it into this software system that's going to do the thinking for us based off your client project dates. And now you might be thinking, but automation feels a little impersonal. But the fact is that automating your workflows for the process heavy tasks gives you way more time to connect with your clients because manual operations like looking for contact info or sending emails or documents or entering data can all be automated or eliminated. And your automation or partial automation across your sales process, your service, your client experience and your marketing is going to free you up so that you can spend more time talking to potential clients and strengthening relationships with your existing ones, which is all going to move the needle forward in your business. And so how do we tangibly do this and what does this look like? Essentially, we have four steps here and I will also share some screenshots so you guys can see what this looks like. So <coughs> step one is we are going to take everything from our streamline phase and we are going to plug it into our CRM. So all those email templates, questionnaires, everything, we're gonna put it into the CRM. Step two is we are going to take our build phase and we are now going to implement the workflow into the CRM after all the templates are loaded. So now when we get to the action, send email, we can just choose the template from our template library of what we want to go in that workflow spot. And then step three, we'll be plugging all our desired workflows into the task management software if there's anything that's more of an internal process that isn't a lot of client facing. And I'll show you a screenshot of that as well. And then step four is to save a boatload of time because <coughs> doing this phase, which is essential in order for all of this to work, is going to help you book more clients by setting up a solid and streamlined inquiry and follow-up process. It's going to give your existing clients an incredible experience no matter how busy you 
are because your communication is proactive and built into your CRM. It'll help you efficiently use your time because you're never going to have to wonder what to do for each client. You're going to walk into work every single day and you are going to have an agenda created for you by your CRM because of the due date triggers in here. It's also going to help you increase your referrals because it'll help you elevate your client experience without too much more work. And it's going to reduce the overwhelm in your business because you can complete tasks without reinventing the wheel every time. And essentially, it's really going to give you way, 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 way more time to live your life and do the parts of your business that you love. So what this looks like is this. So this is a screenshot of my workflow and my streamline phase all built into HoneyBook. So you can see here, there, there are a few different actions in this screenshot. So we have a create task action. We have send email. And you can see on step eight, it says send email wedding vendor recommendations. So when that pops up in my task manager, which I'm going to also share a screenshot with on the next slide, it's going to pop up for me to just approve that email template and send it off to the client at the time that I have already pre-entered into my workflow master template. Same thing with questionnaire. So you can see the due dates here. It says zero days after previous step. And the CRM knows when you check one thing off, the next domino falls because that's how you set it up. And so it will give you an option to either approve things before sending or automatically send. And so I use HoneyBook, but this system and this whole framework will work on any system, free or paid. I know there are some free CRMs out there. They might have a little bit less capabilities. I personally love HoneyBook. We'll talk a little bit more about that later if you want. But this is going to have your action, the template, your due date, and the approval status there. And so that is what all of this being put into the CRM is going to look like. And then your step after that, once it's in there, is applying it to all of your clients. And once that's done, all you need to do on a daily basis is log in to the task management section that most CRMs have. It'll give you a list of everything you need to approve or complete that day. So you can see here, this is a screenshot from last week. So I needed to send the timeline questionnaire to Demi and Dan. I needed to ask Austin for a client testimonial. I needed to send Demi the what's next and the studio policies. I need to send Jason and Alyssa my hair and makeup advice for the wedding and send Natalie a timeline questionnaire. So all I needed to do on this day was hit view, edit, and send. So... And Andy, yes, we do have a service for putting the workflow into your CRM. Um, you can definitely reach out. Bridget is our workflow extraordinaire for putting everything into your CRM. So if you're interested in us helping you do all the work for you, um, we can also do that for you as well. So that is what this looks like. So you guys, you are literally taking your build phase, taking your streamline phase, putting it into your CRM, and then every day, all you have to do to get all of your client projects out the door on time is go into the task manager and just check things off. Like this literally becomes your to-do list every day and you barely need to lift a finger. And this will also tell you all the tasks as well. I just happened to snag a screenshot that was all approvals, but if you need to call the wedding or edit or blog, it will tell you exactly what to do. And then, yeah, Mary Beth, the key is consistency, is checking them. Yes, checking your CRMs every day is totally key. You're checking them once a week. And now this is an example of my post-production workflow implemented into ClickUp. And so ClickUp is our free task management software. It's where we put our weekly plans, our daily to-do list, because we run multiple businesses, so there's a lot that goes on in my life that is not just client work. You can have all of your client workflows inside your CRM, but since we have a 
team of four, we are delegating a lot more than a lot of solopreneurs would be inside their CRM. So we actually use post-wedding, post-portrait, and album design in ClickUp because we can just easily delegate to our team. We can delete tasks. We can change due dates a little more easier. Um, and they're just back-end component workflows of like importing, calling, editing, blogging, all of those things are back-end tasks. So it's just a little bit easier for us to put it inside ClickUp because it's more malleable, I guess the word would be. So we, <coughs> um, we use ClickUp for that and ClickUp is free. So we only use it from the day we have the wedding all the way to delivering it. So that is the ClickUp workflow. And you can use um, the same CRM for pre and post workflows, yes. And so if you just want a recap of what goes where, your CRM is going to be your inquiry workflows, your booked workflow up until the wedding or session date, and you can totally use it for post-production if you don't have a team or if you don't use a system where you can delegate. And then your project management software, which are typically free, is going to be all your internal business projects, any personal tasks, like literally I have my grocery list inside ClickUp, um, any courses you are taking, you can put your homework in there, your brain dumps, post-production workflows if you have a team, and album workflows. And that kind of brings us to this other limiting belief that I've heard people say that using workflows and systems feels like it's going to cost a lot of money to get the software I need. But first off, HoneyBook is $17 a month for your first year. You can use any CRM you want. I use HoneyBook. ClickUp is free. So this limiting belief of not being willing to spend two to four hundred dollars a year on business software that will help you save so much time is realistically costing you thousands of dollars because Salesforce, which is a CRM, it's more for corporate um, CRM and people said 79 percent of all marketing leads are never converted to sales when people do not use a CRM. So I think that there's this stigma that everybody is worried about the cost of action, the, the physical cost of payment for a software, but very few people are thinking about the cost of inaction. But the good news is that this framework is not limited to a paid system. You can use a free CRM, you can use a workaround inside ClickUp, Asana, Trello, all of those things to use what I'm teaching you. Um, things like ClickUp, Asana, and Trello, you cannot send emails or questionnaires through. They're not for communication. They're only for checking off tasks. And so while I do recommend that everybody has a CRM with tools that are meant for your industry, this will work on any system free or paid. Um, another report, I just think these things are just crazy. Um, showed that inefficient workflows can cost up to 30% of your company's revenue. So that is certainly a lot more than you would pay in an automation system that will help avoid that inefficiency. And I loved what Gina said here. She said, I finally spent all day yesterday overhauling my workflow organization. I entered all of the steps into the book with your workflows, applied them to my current projects, which was 14 weddings and other sessions. And I've gotten more done in the last three hours, checking off my 98 tasks due today than I have in the last three weeks combined. Seriously, thank you, Laura. This is the only beginning of not struggling anymore. So let's assess our into my client management system. I can handle upwards of 100 clients or more with ease. My workflows are a consistent, repeatable system for every client from the moment they inquire through the end of service. My workflow due dates are all automated, so my CRM gives me a task list daily for what I need to get done for all projects because my systems are all on lockdown. Let me know what your score is there. And again, this is optional, but highly recommended. So if you do not want to grow your business anymore, you don't want to hire anybody, you want to be a solopreneur, that is 10,000% okay. But if you want to free up your time to spend more time on the parts of your business you are passionate about, like taking pictures or focusing on business growth, then this phase is truthfully 
vitally important. And the goal of this phase is to completely remove yourself from parts of your business so that you can focus on more money-making activities that will easily bring you to six figures and beyond. So essentially, we have two easy steps here and then two results here. So step one is writing out your standard operating procedures so that somebody other than you can easily follow them. This is going to look like having a written or video form of how you do all the tasks in your business. And then number two, you then are going to refocus your time on more income producing activities, which is going to result in you growing your revenue three or more times and easily hitting six figures is if that is a goal you have because when you are working on the right parts of your business it is naturally going to grow and i think this gif here is a perfect example if you have ever seen this friends episode where monica is trying to bake phoebe's grandmother's cookies she ends up going through 17 batches of cookies never gets it right and she asks phoebe where she got the recipe and Phoebe, in a French accent, says, Nestle Tolhausa. And Monica freaks out about spending two days baking cookies when the recipe was on the back of the chocolate chip bag the whole time. And the thing here is that Monica had the ingredients, right? She probably had the flour, the eggs, the sugar, the chocolate chips, all of those things to make these cookies, but she didn't have the standard operating procedure. So if you're having trouble visualizing what that is, it's really the recipe on the back of the chocolate chip bag. Your workflow is all the ingredients, but your system or your standard operating procedure is what to do with those ingredients. So Nestle Toll House made a standard operating procedure for making delicious chocolate chip cookies so that anybody with that recipe could do it. That is the point of the scale phase. And that's what my mom had me do in my business. So I could create these processes so that she could help me, even though she didn't work within the wedding industry. So in order for you to actually scale your business and have this work, you need to write your processes down. And again, this is an optional phase. If you are just planning on doing parts one through three to save time and you're good, then like you don't really need to do this, but it is highly valuable if you are trying to remove yourself from different parts of your business. And scaling your business is really all about taking on more work and increasing your revenue without working more hours. The two ways you do that are by streamlining everything so you can take on more for the same amount of time or by hiring team members to do portions of your work so you can focus on income producing activities. So this is our final score here. So let me know what your score is. Number one, I have processes in my business so that if I want to hire anybody, I can easily train them with little effort. Number two, if something happened to me, a assistant, friend, family member, or second shooter would easily be able to follow my processes and get the work done. Number three, I'm confident I could take on double the amount of clients and still manage the workload easily. Number four, I'm working on only parts of my business I love while a team member or subcontractor handles a bulk of the rest. And the last one, I'm able to focus most of my energy on the tasks that bring income into the business. So let me know in the comments if you want to share what your score is for this section. And while you do that, I will share Sarah's story. And Sarah's one of my first students ever inside Photography Workflow Mastery when we launched it a few years ago, the 1.0 version. And Sarah said, I was at one wedding in June when Laura started teaching me her workflows and 17 weddings by the first week in December, not to mention all of the time it saved me already. It takes me all of five minutes to send five perfectly timed follow-up emails that brides actually read and in result book me within days. I'm about to start to implement the rest of it and I'm fully prepared for a huge rise in client referrals next year. And that alone, that was awesome, right? But then this happened about a year or two later. 
Now that it's all done and my business is a fine-tuned, well-oiled machine, it quite literally feels like I'm living in a state of blissful ecstasy. It feels strange to only work, need to work two days a week. She has outsourced and scaled all the parts of her business that she does not love and be taking in a revenue of 85K plus a year, all while giving my clients, all while my clients are being educated, served well, and in a timely manner. Now my biggest question to Laura is what's next because I have all the time to dream and chase a whole new goal while easily managing my current one. I absolutely love Sarah's story and that essentially is our four-part overwhelmed to organized framework and when you implement this you will go from feeling like a hot mess in your business to a well-oiled machine like Sarah you will be able to skyrocket your income your bookings while finding freedom You'll get to work on parts of your business that you love while having time to spend with the people you love, and you'll no longer suffer late nights, the feeling of overwhelm or being frazzled or like you can never catch up. Ultimately, you will run a business that doesn't run you because friends, I get it because I have been there. When you signed yourself up, to be a photographer, to be a business owner, you did not realize you were also signing yourself up for this never ending to-do list of things to learn and stuff to do. There are a million plates in the air at all times, like emailing and scheduling and sessions and making timelines and calling and editing and blogging and accounting and social media management and consults and contracts and proposals and cleaning equipment and so much more. When you multiply that by the amount of clients you have every year, I can agree that it feels like our head could explode. And the truth is that without workflows, systems, and a good organizational framework, most days running a business just kind of feels like you're on this runaway zip line, arms flailing through the air, hoping you make it to the end without throwing up. And if all of those things I mentioned do make your head want to explode because right now they aren't in a system, it's not your fault because our photography industry puts so much emphasis on things like lighting and posing and marketing and editing and all of these external things that our clients see, which are obviously important, but it puts very little emphasis on the actual running a business part. And when we try to do all of these things, we end up being stressed out, overwhelmed, overworked, and burnt out because we're just piecing these random processes and systems together that don't actually help us save any time. And unfortunately, that makes us miss out on a lot of our life. And what's worse is that most photographers end up burnt out completely. They lose their passion for their business. And the thing is, if you don't learn how to work smarter in your business, you're kind of setting yourself up for this lifetime of overwhelm in your business. The truth is, if you don't figure out how to work smarter to get organized, to run your business smoother with less effort on your part, you will constantly be chasing your tail and waiting for busy season to end so you can finally catch your breath. And I can say all of this because I have been there. I know what it is like to be working around the clock, staying up until 2 a.m. because there's no other way that it'll all get done. I know what it's like to neglect self-care, sleep, time with my husband, my family, my friends, and my mental health for the sake of my business. Seriously, curse the dreaded phrase, just 30 more minutes. The good news is my photography business does not look like those 2 a.m. nights or neglecting self-care or sleep or time with people I love anymore. Instead, it looks like this well-oiled machine that serves my clients well while I get to stay passionate about my business because it's not running my life. And that's exactly what I want to invite you to do as well, which is why I am so freaking pumped, you guys, to tell you about Photography Workflow Mastery 2.0. And we are officially opening up the doors again for enrollment and I am so excited. We have welcomed so many new students this year and it's been absolutely amazing. I'm going to publish that in the chat box. Hopefully you guys can see that now so you are able to check that out. But essentially, this is a eight module video based course that serves as your one stop shop to 
doing your photography business faster and easier. It is an A to Z transformative step-by-step -step system that's going to save you time, get your business organized like a well-oiled machine, give your clients a better experience, and give you your freaking life back. Because running a photography business does not need to be hard or take up all your time away from your family. And I'm here to help you do it faster, easier, and more streamlined than you ever thought possible so you can truly and finally have balance in your life. So if you're wondering what the heck is inside of this magical course of goodness, I will tell you a little bit about the modules and all of the bonuses because the good news is you guys get all of my workflows, all of my questionnaire templates, my timeline templates, my family formal list templates. You also have an option to get all 110 of my email templates. And that's just in addition to the course material. That's just the bonuses, you guys. So module one is the business foundation module. In this one, we go through the 11 core building blocks of your business foundation, how to set up and maximize your CRM without the overwhelm, the best business advice I ever received that led to saving thousands of hours a year, the easiest time management tricks to cut your work hours down by 40% or more, and so much more. So we go through every business building block of your foundation in this module so that you can have long-term success. And then in module two, we talk about how to create workflows for just about anything. So you will learn the step-by-step -step process for creating a great workflow that doesn't just save you time, but gets you booked out. We'll talk about how to get off the hamster wheel and streamline every aspect of your business so you can focus on the important tasks and the important people in your life. And I will share how I doubled my income while working half the time and why and how your workflow will become your greatest marketing tool. In module three, we talk all about the inquiry process and converting inquiries into bookings. So if bookings is one of those leaky holes for you, then this is the module that you really want to pay attention to because we will talk about how to reduce getting ghosted from potential inquiries and actually get them onto a call or to a meeting. We'll talk about the secrets to an amazing consultation that almost always result in a booking and how to stand out in your inquiry process from the hundreds or thousands of other photographers in your area. And Gigi asked, will this work for other types of photography like commercial and branding? Um, yes, it'll totally work. I am transitioning to branding almost exclusively. So all of these processes will work. There's definitely Gigi going to be sections like I talk about a same day slideshow and creating family formal lists that you obviously wouldn't need with branding or commercial. But um, I kind of broke it down by module of what is going to be just wedding related versus just um, branding or portrait related. Um, obviously, your consultations are going to look different for commercial and branding than they are with a wedding client. But it's really going to be up to you to decide if there is going to be enough in there that will transfer over to you. All of it will be laid out um, for you on the sales page if you click onto that. But we've had a lot. We've actually had VAs, interior designers. Um, we've had a lot of different types of creatives and wedding planners um, join, even though it is not directly uh, created for them that have seen unbelievable results. So I think you'll be able to take all of the concepts from it and really transfer it if you can read between the lines for some of the videos um, and really transfer that into your business. So hopefully that answers your question um, because I use the exact same systems for my brand photography clients as well. Um, and Mary, I know you sent a message Workflow implementation services are open to anybody. And if you have been in the 1.0 or the 2.0 before, you have lifetime access to it. And so that's module three. Module four is the booking, onboarding, and client experience module. So in this one, we talk about the most often overlooked part of your workflow and how this can make or break trust with your clients. We talk about how to turn every client into a raving fan so your business has a network of referrals from past clients and not just a marketing team of one. 
and how your workflow will improve your client experience so you can serve your clients well no matter how busy you are. In module five, this is all about engagements and portrait sessions. And we talk about how to prepare your clients for their portrait session so you get amazing images and they feel confident. We talk about my signature culling method that will have you flying through sessions in five minutes or less to cull, how to blog weddings in 15 minutes or less, and how to edit and deliver a full gallery in an hour or less. And then in module six, this is really a wedding specific module. We talk about planning and prepping for the wedding day. So we jump into all about creating timelines and family formal lists in minutes so the entire day is smooth and stress-free, the essential steps to implement to ease your client's stress leading up to the wedding day, the most important tips for photographing the wedding that will have your clients, family, and friends raving about you, and the step-by-step -step workflow for creating same-day slideshows. And then module seven, this is the biggest module. This is all about post-production in one tenth the time that you are currently doing. So my culling and editing secrets are going to be shared in here of how to shave hours off your post-production workflow, how to deliver weddings in a week and never have more than two in your queue at a time, the blogging and marketing system I go through for every wedding to ensure maximum reach and exposure, and the simple tip you can use to sell albums with ease, add thousands to your bottom line, and also my A to Z album design workflow that'll help you create albums in an hour or less. And then the final module will be all about automating and the step-by-step -step process to put all of this into your CRM and your task management system quickly and easily. We have literally had students get this course and within a day have every bonus document, their workflow, their templates into their CRM and book two weddings within a week of getting the course using the templates. So they were able to 10x their course investment within a week, which is unbelievable. Um, this module, we also talk about how to create processes and standard operating procedures so that you are running like a well-oiled machine and how to never feel like a hot mess in your business again. And these are all of the bonuses that come with it. You guys get my wedding workflow, my portrait workflow, my album design workflow, and all of my questionnaires, which includes wedding day, um, engagement questionnaire, relationship, timeline questionnaire, the maternity, newborn, family questionnaires, the whole enchilada, as well as my family formal list and some timeline templates as well. It also comes with my wedding photographer's playbook, which is the complete guide to post-production, <coughs> as well as a tech vault and a HoneyBook vault. Again, you can be on any CRM. I use HoneyBook, so I decided to include some videos about it. And this will include videos on how to set up and use Calendly, Calendly to automate your scheduling, Planoly to plan, schedule, and execute your Instagram strategy, co-schedule to schedule all your other social media, how to automate your mileage tracking, have better team communication, a clean inbox, how to screen record, and a number of other productivity apps that will save you dozens or hundreds of hours a year. And in the HoneyBook Vault, we talk about how to set up the contact form, the brochure, the questionnaires, email templates, workflows, and the task manager. And Kwani, you said, do we have to be a photographer to be a fit in the mastery course? Well, I'm not actually in the photo business. I've been getting requests to do image compositions for virtual proposals and wedding invites, seating charts, etc. in the design realm. So I've actually started thinking of trying to start a wedding stationery slash creative design business. Awesome, Kwani. Um, there's definitely going to be parts of the course that will help, like the foundation module will help, the client experience modules will help. Um, I think the inquiry, the booking modules will help, the tech vault and the HoneyBook vault will absolutely help, um, and the creating your workflow module will also help. Obviously, you wouldn't have a template um, like the photographers will get, um, but we could also work with you one-on-one -on -one if that would be a better fit to create a custom workflow for you, because that's actually what we do. Bridget is our lead workflow strategist and um, implementer, so to speak. So we work with tons of different creative design businesses and business owners um, to create custom workflows and then implement that. So if that's a better fit, I think Bridget had put her link to her calendar in the chat box. Um, 
but we do also have a 90 day money back guarantee. So just knowing um, that you're coming into the course not as a photographer, we would be happy to refund you if you do get in and you decide that it's not a good fit. So that's just out there for you as well, um, those two options for you. So, <clears throat> oh, I can't talk this much. Oh my gosh. So the value of all of this, you guys, is the full course is valued at $19.97. There are so many videos on how to get streamlined, organized, and run your photography business with ease without all of the headache of setting this up yourself. You'll also get workflow checklists for wedding, portraits, and albums, eight questionnaires, my best-selling product, 50% off HoneyBook, and access to the HoneyBook and Tech Vault, as well as our private student Facebook group where you are welcome to ask any question you would like. The total value of all of that is $26.67, but the awesome thing that I decided to do for you guys, because I know we are moving into a booking season, is include a vault of 12 interviews with creative experts. It is the Skyrocket Your Bookings bonus vault. And this is only available in the next 24 hours. But these interviews, there's about 10 hours of interviews that I've done. They range covering topics from client experience, using Instagram to book yourself out, creating vendor relationships, using Facebook ads, creating a beautiful website design, copywriting that sells, second shooting to grow your business, creating a killer inquiry and follow-up series, branding tips, and just straight up real life advice from people who've been in the industry for years. You will learn from people like Vanessa Hicks, Michelle Harris, <coughs> Joy Michelle, Jess Jordana, Tori Kellner, Jen Larson, and so many more. And this booking bundle alone would end up costing $2,500 if you had individual coaching with each of these incredible women. But you get access to this completely free if you guys join inside Photography Workflow Mastery within the next 24 hours, which brings that total value up to $5,167. But you will not even pay half of that. Normally, we price the course without bonuses at $697. But this week, the entire course and all of the bonuses are $200 off, which means there are three easy options to get in. You can pay in full for just $497, six payments of $87, or 12 payments of $44. We know this has been a crazy, crazy year for the wedding industry, so we wanted to give a really easy, no-brainer 12-pay option of $44 a month so that you can take the whole next year to pay off this course and not wait until you are drowning with all of this work to get organized. We don't want to wait until we're sinking in order to like ask for the life raft, right? So Gigi said, this all looks good. Is it included in the price to talk to someone on our team a couple times during the class? Um, no, it's not Gigi, but um, I do... Um, zoom coaching calls on occasion um sometimes once a month sometimes every other month and i'm always in the facebook group for any question to be answered um i answer every single question in the facebook group and then we also have live zoom calls that people can hop on to do q a so like technically the answer is yes but um they're just not we don't have like a set number of zoom calls it's just kind of as the questions are racking up but we are fully there to support as you go through this. So, <coughs> sorry, I'm like <coughs> choking. Um, but you guys can join today for $44. And all of these workbooks also come with the course. So I am all about taking action. I love checklists. I love workbooks. So my team has created a workbook for every single module to help you implement faster and easier. And when you am implement this, your sex success is inevitable. Brittany and Matthew were the students that I talked about who implemented this within days of getting the course, booked two brides within a week of inquiring, 
and had their whole workflow implemented into Dubsado within a day. <laughs> and Mary Beth, yes, you can join for 12 payments of $44. And then Tina, she joined a few months ago and she ended up taking a month long sabbatical with her family after implementing the course. She said, it's one of the best investments I've made in the 10 years of running my wedding photography business. Since incorporating her email templates and methods, it feels as if my business is almost running itself. Literally, out of all the education I've purchased, this was by far the easiest to get through and provides actionable steps to actually get it done. I'm pretty sure I finished watching the videos of her entire course in no more than two weeks because I was hanging on to every word and wanted to absorb it all. Overall, I'm more productive, more motivated, my clients are happier, and I've been given back this precious gift called time. So I love that. And Gigi, I will answer that in a second. But what I want to say is that the flood is coming. If you guys have not already experienced it, 2021 and 2022 are going to be some of the busiest wedding years the industry has ever seen. Because of all of these COVID reschedules, myself included, there was not a single weekend day left. So we are getting married on a Thursday next year. Um, we did have a COVID micro wedding this year. Um, but you are going to have to make a choice of either getting your life raft together, getting your systems in place now, or waiting until you are treading water to try and figure this out. And what I don't want to happen is your capacity to be maxed out because of all of the workload that everything takes up. And you can either be holding on for dear life when the flood comes next year of clients. You can be treading water or you can feel like this. <laughs> and I love me some Haley Seinfeld. And Gigi, to answer your question, there is literally no risk. If you guys jump into this course, we have a 90 day money back, 100% money back guarantee. So Literally, you have 90 days to try the course and prove to yourself that it'll deliver the results that I am promising. If it doesn't, you can email my team and we will happily refund you. But there is one catch. You have to show me you did the work. You need to take the course. You need to do the work. You need to implement it because no course, ebook, product, service will work unless you use it. So you cannot just request money back because you have shiny object syndrome and you want to get something else. If you purchase the course, you watch all the lessons, you download the workbooks, and you complete the take action checklist, and in good faith, tell me that you are not a better business owner, you don't feel more organized, you aren't saving any time, you can email me within 90 days and we will refund your entire purchase. So if you're not planning on doing the work and take the steps in the course, then save your money. Seriously, sorry if that sounds harsh, but we want people who are ready to take action and are committed to taking action to becoming a better business owner, to streamlining their businesses and making your life easier. And if that is you, then this is a no risk, no brainer. And you can jump in for $44 today. And this payment plan will be available for you guys all week. It'll go up $200 after next week, but you also have that 24 hour bonus that you are able to get, which is the booking skyrocket your booking vault that you can get with the course when you purchase within the next 24 hours. And you guys will be in good company amongst hundreds of other students like Tori, who said that this is a one-stop shop for growing an unbelievable business. We go through everything from crafting robust workflows to offering an incredible client experience. It's beyond helpful for business owners at any level. You're super lucky if you can start your business off with this course, but it's practical for business owners a few years in as well. And then there's also Tina again and Crystal who said, you're a godsend. I finished putting together all of the templates and started my workflow for my current wedding clients. And I've gotten multiple emails that they are blown away with my communication. And they've appreciated the extra efforts of checking in and sending vendor recommendations. Gosh, this year is going to be amazing. I feel a major weight lifted off my shoulders already. And I will continue. If you guys are 
ready to go from overwhelmed to organized. This is the place to find freedom and sanity and success with your business without hustling 24 seven. And if you are still here, there is a reason for that. It's probably not because you just like listening to me talk. I want you guys to think of something. What is it costing you to not invest in this course? We talked a little bit about this earlier of the cost of action, the actual expense, the exchange of monetary goods. But we also talked about the cost of inaction. And there is a cost of inaction in play here. And so I want to think about what that is for you and what that means to you. Is it time with your family? Is it a better client experience or time for self-care or vacation or a happy hour or time for hobbies? Because if you learned the nitty gritty of exactly how to systemize your business, to get organized and give your clients this unforgettable experience, you would inevitably have a better business and a better life. And I want you to imagine how incredible it would be to hang out with your spouse, your friends, travel, relax, and have time to yourself guilt-free because all of that is completely possible. The year I implemented this, as you guys heard, I went on vacation for 58 days that year. We flipped a house, the house that I'm now living in. We started a second business and me and my husband had a date night almost every single week on top of shooting 28 weddings and 40 sessions. I want you to imagine having clients rave about you to their friends and the potential that this would have not just on your business, but your life. Because if you want to work smarter and actually spend time with your family, your friends, and have a chance to relax for once, you need a smart system in place to make that happen. And Photography Workflow Mastery is that system. And so I would absolutely love to see you guys in the course and welcome you in with all of the other students who are already inside. This is a few years into having this course. So there are hundreds of photographers already inside waiting to welcome you. And if you also want access to this workflow workbook, I'm just going to pop that into the chat for you. And Bridget will also be sending out an email afterwards with a link to the replay as soon as that's loaded and a link to the workbook. But you guys are welcome to grab that workbook and you can download that as well. I just shared the document as well in the chat. But if you have any questions at all, please let me know. I would love to answer them. I would love to see you inside. And I just want to thank you guys so much for spending the afternoon with me or maybe the morning, depending on your time zone. So if you have any questions at all, please let me know and I will hang out until we're all wrapped up. Amy said, the cost of my business is nearly throwing in the towel. I have a great business consultant holding my hand and pulling me through the burnout and confusion. This particular system is just one major task on my list this year. So glad to save time and money spent with her to get this done with you. Love that. Yeah, Amy, honestly, uh, my cost was nearly throwing in the towel as well. Um, that is why all of this needed to happen because there was no way that I could sustain the level of work that I was doing and the hustle and the hamster wheel that I was doing. And I ended up in the hospital. Um, and it is not something that I wish upon anybody because burnout is real and it lasts for a long time. Um, it's really hard to find passion for your business when you are truthfully burnt out. There's a difference between exhausted and having a, a long week of long hours and true burnout. And I have hit true burnout. Um, and I completely concur to that. I hope that you don't throw in the towel and I hope that you are able to join inside the course because I think that this will really transform where you are at in your business and it'll help you see that there is another balanced 
side that you can have both a business and a thriving life. Like we literally have students in here who have five kids. Um, so I hope to see you inside because I would absolutely love to help you not throw in the towel if your business is something that you are passionate about. And Mary Beth, um, Gigi, you're welcome. Della, you're welcome. Mary Beth, awesome. You're welcome. Very true with hustle, work, and missing out on family time. Yeah. Gigi, can anybody help me with Dubsado from your team or in your group? Yeah, we have a few Dubsado users in the group for sure. Um, and we've also implemented people onto Dubsado. So if you would rather have a custom workflow implementation, Gigi, we can totally help you with that. We're very familiar with HoneyBook, Dubsado, 17 Hats. Um, they all work very, very similarly. Um, so we can totally help you with that. I think Bridget has her Calendly link. I'll link that back up for you too. If you would prefer to set up a meeting for some custom help in Dubsado, we can definitely chat with you about that. So either way, let me know. And Amy, I'm glad you resonated with that, but I'm also sorry that you resonated with that because I know that it's not a fun place to be. So I hope that I can help you change all that. Awesome. I know there's a delay, so I will hang out in case you guys have questions. Let me know. If not, I will allow you to continue on with your day. Awesome. Okay. I am going to end it. Um, we're going to turn my screen share off. Um, and then if you guys think of any questions, feel free to also message me on Instagram. Um, if you think of anything afterwards or shoot us an email. Oh, Amy, I'm so glad um, that this hits the spot. I hope that this was super valuable. I always try to keep it short, but uh, there's so much to talk about. So I hope to see you inside to continue helping you on your way back up. Um, but yeah, that's my email. If you guys have any questions, I'll definitely be in email later today and in my Instagram. And I hope you guys have a good day. And uh, Gigi, I just threw that in the chat. So um, I know I'm a little delayed. So just shoot us an email. Um, or Gigi, if you would prefer to talk one-on-one -on -one with Bridget, she does the custom workflows and implementation into Dubsado. Um, her link is also there to set up a calendar appointment. And... Awesome. I'll wait another minute just in case you guys have questions. Cool. I'm going to hop off, but thank you guys so much. And yeah, just shoot me a question if you think of it either via email or via Instagram, and I will be happy to answer. Thank you guys so much for joining. I hope this was super helpful for you, and I'm excited for you guys to have more time freedom. So have a great day. I will hopefully talk to you guys soon.